All right, thank you, Adrian, and greetings and good afternoon to everyone that uh, is on today. Uh, I'm going to take you through a brief PowerPoint presentation here of who we are as the technologies and cover some of the Starship highlights. Now, at the present point, I'm going to jump right into the demo of the software, and then I'll conclude, as Adrian mentioned, with questions and opening up the floor. All righty. So these technologies, uh, we've been specializing in integrating shipping solutions since 1989. We're located here in Connecticut, so all our sales, our supports, development is done in-house. We have been currently uh, working with QuickBook product lines for about 15 years, a little over, and we are a QuickBooks Go development partner. Also, V-Technologies is a strategic UPS-ready provider and Gold FedEx certified solution. So both UPS and FedEx provide subsidy amount programs and which can be used towards purchasing a solution like Starship. And if you're interested in that, please touch base uh, with your representative or the respective carrier. Uh, inquire more about the program, uh, for it is a great program and it's a great tool to also take advantage of. So just a few uh, Starship highlights here. Uh, Starship is a multi-carrier, multi-mode application. Starship has the ability to do line item integration. And with that line item integration, Starship will be able to automate your small parcel orders, your LTL, international, and also any EDI uh, transactions and orders uh, that you may have as well. Starship also will allow you to rate shop between carriers uh, with your negotiated rates. And alongside with the Starship license comes two additional features, uh, one being eNotify, and eNotify is a custom email generator tool that allows you to customize and brand your email notification. And the other is Dashboard, and Dashboard is a data analyzing tool uh, that grants your front office access to uh, various reports, uh, shipping information, shipping history, and so forth. So we currently uh, offer a direct integration with over 25 different carriers. And here's just a, a list of few carriers that we work with directly. So Starship, of course, is used to automate your shipping, uh, but we really uh, work towards completing your entire workflow. And this is where our key partners come into play. So we work with WMS solutions like Fishbowl and Activate. And also for those who are receiving EDI orders today uh, from big box retail stores such as Walmart or Target.com, uh, we work with EDI solutions like SPS Commerce and True Commerce uh, to help automate that workflow as well. Starship has the ability to integrate directly to e-commerce platforms, as you see here. So we also offer these uh, e-commerce platforms as a direct extension or a extension from the Starship solution with QuickBooks. Uh, so for example, if a customer can a customer can map specific orders from their e-commerce platforms into Starship, and upon completing that order inside of Starship, Starship has the ability to write back both QuickBooks and to that e-commerce platform as well. All right, so that concludes the PowerPoint that I have here, and I'm going to switch over to the demo environment. All right, so I'm gonna briefly walk you through a demo with QuickBooks Enterprise. Um, for all the QuickBooks Online users that may be on the call, um, the process that you will see today is with QuickBooks Enterprise again, but the um, workflow is very similar and almost identical. Uh, to the workflow process that will be done with QuickBooks Online as well. So as I mentioned earlier, Starship has the ability to obviously process your small parcel orders uh, with UPS or FedEx and um, the post office. But one of the key features that uh, Starship is uh, able to do is process your LTL and international documentation as well. So therefore, in this example that I'm getting ready to show you today, this is going to be a LTL shipment that is also going to be shipping internationally. So here inside of QuickBooks Enterprise, I have a simple sales order, uh, two line items down below. And as you see in the ship two, this is going to ship to Canada. And in the ship via fields, I have it uh, mapped to Old Dominion. Right. 
let me bring up Starship here. So here's the Starship user interface. Um, I can bring over that QuickBooks order in three ways here. First, if the sales order is scannable, I can scan in the barcode, and that will populate input into this input field here. I can also click on the magnifying glass, which will open up a list of open sales orders inside of QuickBooks, and from there you can batch process as well. Or I can simply enter in the document number of that sales order. And so if you notice in this top left quadrant here that I'm highlighting with the mouse, Starship is going to pull over that header information from that QuickBooks order. So the transportation field updates with that old Dominion Freight, uh, which was matched from that ship via field, the billing information. The sender information came over along with the recipient um, that was updated coming directly from that ship to field inside of QuickBooks. So jumping down to the packaging view here below. Um, so let me going to expand all here. And so in this example, I have two line items being auto-packaged inside of Starship. So for this specific scenario, um, this is already preset inside of Starship. But with WMS systems such as Activate or Fishbowl, um, Starship will automatically populate uh, that packaging scenario from those systems in that specific order into this view here. So inside the packaging view, if you notice, I have uh, two line items coming to two separate custom boxes, all placed on a custom palette. I can also add uh, a palette here. I can add specific packaging, or I can also delete palettes and packaging as well. Also, another feature here, if I wanted to, I can drag and drop specific line items into different packages, and same with the packages in terms of dragging and dropping them onto a palette. All right, so if I click on the anchor here, if you notice, the line item tab opens up up top. And so inside of Starship, we try to pull as much information as possible through QuickBooks regarding a specific line item. Um, so however, if you're not currently populating the line item information inside of QuickBooks, Starship has its own database that will allow you to enter and store different information. So if you notice, the item number and description came over from QuickBooks directly. And that information that is being stored inside of Starship is the unit value, uh, which is important for international uh, shipments. Unit weight, the MMSC code, and the class. And also for international orders, that Schedule B information is also stored here in Starship as well. So because it's an international order, the international tab opens up up top. And here's where you can enter in international information such as adding a broker if you have. Also any duty or tax in the accounts and who would be paying for that. And also to the right here, here's your commercial invoice information. So the goods value and also the invoice total which is being pulled directly from uh, that QuickBooks order. So jumping over to the rate shop here, I'm gonna click shop all. And by doing so, Starship will Go out and populate your negotiated rates uh, with the carriers that you have purchased inside of Starship. So as you're going to see here, Starship has requested the rates directly from the carriers and it will populate in this view here. So one of the key features inside of uh, the rate shop, if you've noticed, um, is the ability to view your both parcel and LTL rates all on one screen here. So in this view, you can sort by carrier names, you can also sort by delivery, or you can sort by charges here. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to select UPS standard to Canada, I can click on UPS standard. This will update the transportation field and also update the documentation and labels uh, to be printed out as well. So to process and ship this shipment here, I can click F5, or I can go up top and click Ship and Process. And so Starship is now going to update the sources, and by sources I mean QuickBooks, or if you have a e-commerce extension, it's going to print out your labels and documentation as well. So,
So here's your commercial invoice, uh, the header information up top, which is being populated and pulled from QuickBooks, the carry information, the description of goods with those two line items and the schedule will be attached to each, and the invoice total and information down below. Right behind the commercial invoice is our Starship Bill of Lading. And so here, I, again, don't mind my printer settings. Um, I'm in a test environment. But that header information, which is being pulled from QuickBooks, if you notice down below, I um, actually had those two line items set in one specific class. Uh, so this rolled up into one line here. Total charges and so forth. So some carriers, um, such as Old Dominion, will provide actually a direct bill of lading, which was emailed to me uh, just a few seconds ago. So here's what that looks like straight from Old Dominion, that header information up top, the description, and so forth. So if you decide not to use the Starship bill of lading, um, you can also uh, request a bill of lading from some carriers uh, that you use inside of Starship as well. All right, so following the BOL um, comes our NAFTA documentation and the certificate of origin. That header information up top, the description of goods down below, the tariff codes, and the information down below to follow. So now that the labels and documentation has been completed, I'm going to go back into QuickBooks here to show you the right back. So if you notice, the freight charges were written back on a line item down below. And right below the freight charges were the ship on date, the service of that carrier, and also the tracking number um, to follow. So inside of Starship, we have what we call freight rules um, that allow you to set up certain scenarios in terms of uh, freight write back. So for example, if you want to add specific shipping or handling fees, um, you can do so. Or if you want to say remove the freight charge, uh, if you have a shipment over X amount, uh, you can do so as well with freight rules. All right, so that concludes the shipping process of Starship. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, there are two additional features that come with the Starship license. One being the dashboard and the other being eNotify. So here's the dashboard uh, user interface. So as I mentioned earlier, dashboard is uh, a data analyzing tool that grants your entire front office access to shipping information, uh, various reports that you can run here in terms of shipping stacks and also shipping history. And so, uh, for example, if a customer was asking for information about their package um, in, in that shipping, that can be brought up here uh, to be displayed for your front office. Secondly, uh, eNotify allows you to custom customize email notification and replace the carrier supplied email. Um, this also gives you the ability to brand include information from QuickBooks. Um, so if you noticed here, I have an example with the company logo up top. I have the service, I have the tracking number, and this tracking number is actually a link directly to that carrier to track their package. The information for that shipment, and also down below, I have a coupon to attract more traffic to uh, the company's website. Um, and again, just to show you what you can do in terms of branding and marketing as well. All right, so that concludes the demo itself. I'm going to turn it back to Adrian here. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, Moses. That was a good uh, snapshot of uh, Starship. Um, and I do have some questions here, but I'd like to launch a poll while we're announcing the questions. So if you can just take a minute to answer this question, that'd be awesome. Please tell us what integration you are most interested in. Select all that apply. And let's see, the questions are, okay, so is Starship able to write back 
tracking to orders with group items without item list permissions. Regular items write back without item list permissions, but group items seem to need it. Thank you, Jeff, for that question. And Moses, yeah, so, I'm sorry. did you need me to repeat that or do you think you, that's kind yeah, of. Yes, so Starship uh, is able to write back um, the tracking for the group items. Um, we, we can have a setting to write back the master tracking or if you want to write back individually. Um, the tracking information, you can do so as well. And we currently are running QuickBooks Online and ShipGear. Uh, what's the difference between ShipGear and, and Starship? And can we run Starship with QuickBooks Online? Yes. So um, QuickBooks Online is compatible with Starship. Um, the main difference with Starship and ShipGear is uh, we will automatically remove your carrier's interface, uh, which could be UPS WorldShip or FedEx Ship Manager. Um, those carrier interfaces will go away, and you'll be able to process um, all your orders, um, orders meaning your LTL, your small parcel, uh, with the different carriers that you're using for shipping, all inside of Starship. And let's see, it looks like we might have a hand raised here, so I'm gonna take a look at that. And we do have Simon on the line with us. Simon, I didn't know if you had any uh, feedback or anything that you wanted to add while I'm announcing the next question. No, I the I just want to go back to that last question as well. And a couple additional things you do get with Starship um, versus ShipGear. Um, the ability to rate shop if you are using multiple carriers um, is a key feature that you don't have in ShipGear today. Um, and also the line item integration is a key feature versus just order header info that you are receiving with ship gear today. Um, so the ability to define item to box detail um, in Starship um, as Moses was showing on the demo um, and then obviously the ability to process international documents and then rate shop are some of the key differences. And we have another question here. Thank you, Pam, for your question. How do you add freight carriers? Yep, so um, with your Starship license, um, if you, again, we work with over 25 different carriers. Um, so in order to add a specific freight carrier to your Starship license, um, it would be as simple as letting us know, um, and then you would pay for that specific carrier. And the configuration um, is fairly simple. Um, if this is your first time, meaning it's a new license with Starship, uh, we do offer installation and support um, from our team here, and they will go ahead and add that. They will test it, configure it for you, uh, make sure everything is up and running. Uh, but if this is a, a add-on additionally to your Starship license, um, again, you just have to let us know, and then uh, we'll take a payment, and then we'll go ahead and, and add that for you. And roughly, what is the cost to upgrade from ship gear to Starship? So, so the cost varies. Um, it really depends on what uh, your needs are. Um, so, for example, if you're looking to add multiple carriers or if you have multiple seats, um, one of the main differences in terms of cost is that Starship uh, is a one-time fee with the annual software maintenance uh, rather than ship gear, which is a monthly cost. Um, and in terms of uh, the ship gear cost, um, for the year, depending on what your Starship license is, it's 17% of the total license. Depending on what that is, um, it could be cheaper. Um, but again, it really depends on what you would need in terms of the Starship license. And, and oh, go ahead. And Adrian, if I could just add one thing. And one thing with that, um, for QuickBooks users, we do offer um, a bundled solution um, for QuickBooks users with Starship. So we'll bundle in um, a couple of carrier modules and um, that we don't on other interfaces. Um, so you do have a, um, a, a nice bundled solution on the front end. And as Moses said, it is a one-time fee with just the annual maintenance each year from there. And we are using SPS Commerce. How long would it take to implement Starship with SPS Commerce, EDI? Moses, I'll answer that. Um, 
So uh, to with SPS Commerce or the same with True Commerce, either one, um, it really, so from our piece, it depending on how many, um, one thing on the um, EDI solution um, that we have the ability to do is generate 128 labels as well as AS, configure ASNs. Um, so it, depending on how many um, trading partners you're working with that would require ASN configuration, um, that would just add some time to the overall project. Um, but really where it comes down to is when we hand it off to SPS Commerce, um, and then they usually take about a week, um, it could be up to two weeks, um, for them to do their um, uh, uh, testing on their side with the trading partners to be able to give it back to us to do some final testing uh, with their solution. So overly, maybe about a week to two weeks max, um, depending on trading partner requirements. And could you review the e-commerce integrations that you currently support? Yes. Um, so currently, um, as of today, we support Amazon, eBay, uh, WooCommerce, and Shopify. And I'm not seeing I'm not... any other questions. Uh, Moses, did you have something to add to that? Uh, yes, not too sure um, if you were asking the direct uh, uh, solution for, for the e-commerce, but we do have a direct um, e-commerce platform integration, and we do have an extension um, that comes with the Starship for QuickBooks. So again, for example, Starship has the ability to write back to both the QuickBooks module and also the e-commerce platform um, as well. And if uh, they're not using one of those that you mentioned, if they're using Magento or something like that, you have probably an open interface where you can um, attach with a customization. Correct. So, correct. So actually, um, the Magento module for Starship is currently in development with our team here um, and should be completed soon. Uh, but we do have a SQL extension for those who are interested in, um, in that as well. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and close out this poll and share the results. So it looks like 80% of you are interested in the QuickBooks Inter Enterprise interface, 20% uh, Fishbowl Activate, which is a warehouse management application that integrates with QuickBooks, uh, and 40% of you are interested in the EDI, and 60% are interested in the e-commerce integration. Uh, Moses, I'm going to go ahead and hide these poll results so we can flash up your contact information. and. Sure. Moses or Simon, did you guys have any closing remarks or anything you'd like to add? No, I, I would just like to thank everyone for joining this afternoon. Um, hopefully we're able to show you a different type of solution that you may not have uh, been aware of, um, or if you are an existing customer and looking to add on or integrate with EDI or WMS integration, um, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo um, and we'll also follow up with those who've responded to the poll um, to see how we can better assist from here. But thank you everyone for joining this afternoon. And just a heads up everyone, we did record this webinar and we are going to send out the recording and a follow-up email along with Moses's contact information. And we do appreciate you taking that time out to, to join us today and we'll get uh, in touch with you per your poll responses. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care. Thank you.